Hello, everyone. My name is Marika, and I will moderate today's meetup. And we want to welcome you to our dynamic talks by Grid Dynamics. And I also see that we have people joining every minute. So until we are waiting, I will tell you a little bit more about our company. Maybe some of you already know about Grid Dynamics, but we want to tell you a little bit more. So Grid Dynamics is a leading provider of technology consulting, engineering, and data science services for Fortune 1000 corporation from financial, technological, and retail sectors. It has been operating since 2006, is headquartered in California, and have development centers in United States, Eastern, and Central Europe. As for today, Grid Dynamics brings together more than 4,000 engineers in 13 countries and continues to grow steadily. Grid Dynamics is a NASDAQ-listed public technology service company with core expertise in big data, data science, machine learning, and IE, scalable omnichannel services, DevOps, and cloud enablement. Here you can see some of our clients in different sectors. There's a lot of well-known companies that we are working with. So if you want to know more about our company or join us, please find more details on our career site. So you can scan the QR code or follow the link. And if you have already maybe CV or you want to know more, you can send it to the email that you see on this slide. So also I wanted to tell you about some rules before we start. So during the talk, you can ask questions via Zoom chat. Uh, please check that all messages in chat is visible for all participants. And after the report, uh, you can unmute and ask the question by voice. But please check that your mic is muted during the call because uh, it will distract our speaker. So I think uh, that we can start. And I want to present uh, our speaker and our speech today. So today we will listen for a technical topic from our senior software engineer, Nazim Umud Ekichi, with the topic of lighting fast startup times with Spring 6 and Graal VM native images. So Nazim, I will share the virtual mic to you so you can start. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Marika, for the kind introduction. So let me start by sharing my screen. We can see your screen. OK, great. Then, once again, hello and welcome, everyone. And I'm Nazum Tekiji, a software engineer with Grid Dynamics. And today we will discuss how you can achieve lightning fast startup times with Spring 6 and GraalVM native images. So, imagine you're a developer working on a cloud native application that uses the Spring framework. The project has a requirement, it needs to be up and running and responding in mere milliseconds. So you start tweaking the code, making a change here and there with no result. Then you try boosting the infrastructure, adding more and more power to it, burning money, but there are only minimal change. Then you try tweaking the JVM, trying different options and maybe even different JVMs, but it still does not put you in the millisecond range as required. You're about to give up when you hear about Spring Native, a new technology that promises to reduce the application's startup time dramatically. You decide to give it a try, and within minutes, you're blown away by the results. This is the power of Spring Native. And in this presentation, I will show you how it works and why it's a game changer for cloud native development. Here is the agenda for the rest of this presentation. First, we will discuss what are the possible problems slow startup times cause to you. Then we will discuss what makes the Spring application prone to slow startup times. Then we will move on to what Spring offers to mitigate these issues. After that, we will follow up the demo to show how this all works in action and discuss how well it delivers its promises. Then we will go on to discuss what are the limitations and caveats of this solution? This will lead us to a discussion on what is the current state of things with Spring Native and what the future holds for this new technology. Finally, we will revisit the problems we started with and end with a conclusion. So 
let us start with defining what is the problem. Spring applications do tend to start off slowly, and this is causing problems. Consider a service with auto scaling. The idea with the scaling is service demand increases, scaling is triggered, and new instances are launched to pick up the slack. But if your application takes a long time to start up, it will take some time until any observable effect. As a result, the system will have higher inertia on horizontal scaling. A simple workaround is you can keep standby instances. So instead of launching the applications, you activate them instead. But that is just money down the drain. You have low utilization, and it is for a higher demand that may or may not even happen. Another thing to consider is the disaster recovery. Now, assume for whatever reason, it may be a provided problem or a maintenance or an update by you, all your instances go down. Recovery actions are triggered and you launch new instances. But again, you will not observe any corrective action until the application actually starts up. The simple workaround is to again keep warm instances, maybe in another server or in another region. But again, that is money spent on instances you don't actually utilize. So with both problems, you basically have two options. You either spend money on underutilized instances, or you make your users suffer for the startup duration. And another problem to consider is the long startup times prevents you from using the fancy new function as a service platforms. All major cloud providers have one form of this new paradigm. You have AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions, and Azure Functions. And the idea here is you just provide a script or an executable, and the platform takes care of the rest. For each request, your executable is restarted. So it is easy because it requires zero setup, and it is cheap because at rest, you pay nothing. Only the execution duration is built to you. This is the so-called serverless paradigm because you don't manage the server. This is all nice, but this does not really play well with long startup times because on each request, you will have to wait for the startup duration. And the time you spend waiting will add to your billing period for this startup duration. So to summarize, here are the problems caused by the long startup duration with Spring applications. Systems will have a higher inertia at horizontal scaling and at disaster recovery. This will also prevent you from using function as a service platforms. Now that we know what are the problems we have due to slow startups, let's discuss what is the solution. Let's move on to the ahead of time compiling and GraalVM native images. Let's begin by breaking down the things we will discuss at this section. We will first cover the reason of the slow startups and their solution, the GraalVM native images. Then we will discuss the code reachability issues associated with GraalVM images and what Spring does to address this. Finally, we will jump into the IDE and see all this in action and discuss whether or not Spring actually delivers its promise. To start things up, we need to first clarify why does Spring applications start slow? One reason is that Spring does a lot of things at the startup. The main thing is before startup, Spring has actually no clue on your project. So consider all the Spring annotations a typical project uses. You have your components, beans, repositories, entities, configurations, and Spring has to figure all these out at the runtime each and every single time. It also does a lot of configuration depending on the runtime environment. Both of these are achieved with a lot of package scanning and reflections, which end up costing you time. The second part of the problem is the Java virtual machine. It takes some time to start up the JVM itself. 
before it can even try to start up your application. Then the JVM will load up your classes and will initialize them, which takes additional time. And it will run your Java bytecode, which is an intermediate form that must be converted into machine instructions just before it is executed. With that, it takes quite a few executions for JVM to reach its peak throughput after the launch, which is called a warm-up period. And the result is, even for the simplest Spring project, the startup takes longer than a second. That is, if you were to create a new Spring project with a single class, a string component, a single endpoint, and no external dependencies. And it can only go up from here. Any new stuff you add on top will increase this duration further. So what is the Spring solution to that? For the two-part problem of JVM being slow and Spring doing a lot of stuff at the startup, they propose a two-part solution. The first part is, if the JVM is slow, let's ditch the JVM. <laughs> Simple, right? Instead of relying on JVM to run our application, let's compile it into a native executable. And the second part of the solution is to have Spring do more work on the build time as opposed to on runtime. So instead of Spring seeing your project for the first time each and every time and try to make sense of it by scanning things, it will have prior knowledge. And it turns out that this is actually a prerequisite for the first part of the solution. Now, the Spring developers have been working on this for quite some time. The first versions were released in experimental packages in late 2019. After three years under development, they are finally released to the general audience with Spring 6 at the end of the last year. Let's get into the solution and start by GraalVM native images. GraalVM is an Oracle product that can be used as a regular old boring JVM with just-in-time compiling. But the neat thing is, it also comes with a tool chain that can take Java code and compile it into a native executable with what is called an ahead-of-time compilation. This is ahead-of-time in the sense that the compilation happens at the build time as opposed to at the runtime. And with that, you simply get rid of the JVM and its effect on the startup process. Now, this comes with some caveats, like all the good things do. There is a so-called closed world assumption that goes with GraalVM images. All code should be present at the compile time. This means you cannot dynamically load dependencies at the runtime. Now, this makes sense, right? Ahead of time compilation will compile the code at build time. To do that, the code simply must be available at the build time. And a second caveat is dead code elimination. Only the code that is reachable will be included in the image. And that is a crucial change because it breaks the assumption that all your source code will be present at the runtime. And with that, it requires some additional discussion. Let's talk about how the dead code elimination works and how that affects you. To figure which pieces of code are accessible, a static analysis is done, starting from the main method. The analysis iteratively searches the code until it cannot find a new code. On the native image, only the reachable methods and fields are included. For a small example with three classes, let's investigate how that works on pseudocode. The main method is always included. That makes sense, right? Since that is the entry point. Then the main method refers to class foo's bar function. So foo bar is also included in the image. The foo bar references the buzz count, so that pulls in that method. Notice how, even though the foo bar is included in the image, foo thread is not. 
because there is no reference to it from any of the reachable code. But the thing is, references are not the only way we access methods in Java. There is also reflection. So if the main method were to call foo thread by reflection, it would still not be included in the native image. And as a result, you will get a method not found exception on invocation. To address this, the ahead of time compilation takes reflection hints as an optional input. This gives you a chance to say, hey, I know you think this method is unreachable, but I know a few things that you don't, so please include this method as well. All right, so far we have discussed how GraalVM native images help with startup times, but GraalVM is framework agnostic. It only knows what a Java code is, and it takes that code and converts it into a native executable. It does not care that your code uses Spring. So what does it mean for Spring to support native images? Well, the problem is Spring applications are not really native image friendly. Recall how we mentioned how Spring relies heavily into reflection to get things to work. And reflections are not something that works well with native images due to this reachability analysis that we have discussed. Looking at this code snippet actually demonstrates this quite well. This is how a typical Spring Boot application's main method probably looks like. You start the framework and that is it. A static analysis done with this main file has no way of reaching to your code. There is only the Spring code. So to address this, Spring has introduced Spring ahead of time processing to try and make Spring applications more native image friendly. So what does it take to make a Spring application native image friendly? Essentially, you need additional assets to feed into. One part of this is the bean definitions. Spring takes the annotation-based bean definitions that you have coded and converts them into a POSIO format. This also means Spring will not have to spend time at startup to search for its beans. It will know which beans are defined and how to build them. And the second part of this solution is to generate reflection hints. Spring is aware of the reflection it utilizes to make things work, so it can create the required reflection hints. With all that being said, how do you actually build a native image? Well, all you have to do is add a single Maven or Gradle plugin. You execute the related goal or task and spring ahead of time processing and ahead of time compilation, they are handled for you. All you have to do is to provide the source code as you already do and additional reflection hints if needed. One thing to point out is Native image creation flow builds on top of your existing flow. So it does not prevent you from packaging your application the way you used to do. The reflection hints and the AOT generated code does not interview with your application unless you compile it into a native image. Now that we know what the native images are and how to actually build them, we can now try to do a little demonstration. In this demonstration, we will create a fresh Spring Hello World project and we'll show how these images are actually built. And we will also see what are the Spring AOT processing generated sources look like and how code reachability may go wrong and result in unexpected behaviors. So let's jump right into the IDE as promised and create a new project. We can name it RALVM demo. And I will leave every place as is because I will use Maven. Then we hit the next to go to the Spring Initializer dialog menu. And right at the top, under the developer tools, you will notice the RALVM native support. And that is what we want. We also want the Spring web, not because it is needed for Spring native, but 
to add a little bit of inter interactivity into this demo. And that is all we want. So let's hit create. And here we have our little fresh project. Let us begin with a visit to the pom.xml file and see what did we get for enabling Spring Native. And if we scroll all the way to the down, we will see that we have the Native Maven plugin. And that is actually the only thing you need to compile a native image. Now, let's go into the main class and start adding some code. Now, to save some time, I will paste some snippets, but don't worry, I will explain them as we go. So let's start with a simple endpoint that we can use to verify that the server and the application is working correctly. So let's add the REST controller and a get endpoint. Let's also define the SDK because it's not picking it up for some reason. All right. Now that we have a single get endpoint that we can visit with a browser to get the text hello world. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit. Great. We have been discussing that Spring will have to process bean definitions and generate code for them. So let's add a bean to be able to see what the Spring AOT does with that. And here is a simple string bean. Great. And to observe how reachability analysis works, let's add a small class with two methods. And here it is. We have a single class with two methods, the foo and the bar. Each of them just returns simple string and tell you who they are. Great. One thing to note is that neither of these methods are actually referred from anywhere else in the code. So these are actually unreachable. I will also add a second endpoint to be able to call these methods with reflection. So this is an endpoint that takes a name parameter and tries to find the, find the method that we named within the class that we have just introduced. It then calls the method and returns its output to us as a simple string so that we can observe what it does in the IDE. Great. And it has just enough error handling to let us know that when the method is not found. And finally, we will add a reflection hint. And here it is. Now, you could opt for a JSON file to provide this hint, but configuration through code, it is the Spring mantra, right? So it makes sense for Spring to provide us with such an interface. This method creates a reflection hint only for the foo method of the my class, so that we will be able to see the difference between the foo method that we have just created this hint for and the buzz method that has no hints and no reachability once we try to execute them. We will also need to let Spring know of this hint class that we have just created. And to do that, we just import a runtime hint. And with that, we are actually ready to build our first image. So we can jump into the terminal and execute the Maven goal for this GraalVM plugin. The completion requires the native profile to be active. And I am simply skipping the tests because I want to save a little bit of time. So um, let's try to compile this and see how it works. All right, it is actually failing because it couldn't find some of the imports. That is great. Let's try to redefine the project SDK that we didn't pick up for some reason. Let's see. Project structure. And let's try it with the corrector 18. All 
All right, that is a little bit unexpected, but don't worry. I have the exact same project that in another version that I know that it works. So let's just quickly switch to that. All right, and here we are. Now, this is the exact same project. The only difference is that I had pre-compiled it, so I know that this one works. Great, so let's try to compile this one. And right again, we have the same Maven command. We activate an native profile, we skip the tests, and that's it. So let's hit the compile. And well, this will take some time. And while this is ongoing, we can start this application in the regular old way and make some observations. So let's create another terminal and simply use the JVM to launch this application with the generated jar file. Great. All right, the first thing that we should note here is the time it takes to start up this application. The sprint log says this application started in 1.1 seconds and the process itself has been running for two seconds. So it took Spring a second to process our application and make sure the beans are all there and initialized. But on top of that, the JVM itself took a generous 0.9 seconds just to start itself up. All right, so while this compilation is ongoing, we can jump into the browser and make some additional observations and we can hit the endpoints that we have added. So right there at the root, we have the hello world and it just prints out hello world as expected. So going back to the code, we have this endpoint method and name. All right, we have a method name called hidden method first. So let's try to call that method. Let's go back here, method and methods name. Great, it just prints out its name. We have a second method that is called hidden method second. Let's try to call that one. And you can see that hidden method second is also visible. Now, even though none of these methods are reachable from the main method itself, and only one of them has reflection hints, the regular old compiled version is able to call both of them. So now let's switch back to the ID and take a look at the Spring AOT generated sources. They are generated under the target and Spring AOT. And you can find these sources under the sources. And now we just have to find our package, which is the Grel one. And in here, you will see the beam definitions file. And in this file, Spring AOT basically generates two things for you for each of your beams. A beam definition that basically says, hey, there is a beam that is of type string here somewhere. And I know how to create this, this um, beam. And it is created by this instance provider. And what this one does is that it basically knows that to create this string beam, we should visit the Graal1 application class, our main class, and should invoke this method to create this beam. Great. So in the meantime, our um, native image build has completed and we can finally run the native executable. And one thing to note is that even for this simple project, it actually took a minute and a half for this native image compilation to complete. So let's start our application with target Graal1. And to be able to have both of these versions running at the same time, I will just start this guy with another server port. And notice how we don't use the JVM, but instead we invoke the native image just as we would with any other executor. So let's start it. 
and it is asking for a permission, which is okay. And the one thing that we can immediately notice is the difference between startup times. While the regular old version was taking a minute and a point one to start up, this native image version is starting up in 0 0.04 seconds, which is amazing. Even with the non spring initializations, it is still faster than 16 milliseconds, which is, which is a dramatic increase in the startup speed. So let's switch back to the browser and first visit the root. And here we go. Our web server in the native executable works just fine and serves us the same string as the JVM version does. Let's once more try to invoke our two methods. So let me copy this URL from here. And oops, need the slash. And start with the first one. And just like that, when we visit the first method, and remember, this was the one we added a reflection hint for, and we observe that this first method is reachable, and we can execute it and get back its results. But once we try to visit the second method, now we get a different behavior because this method is unreachable by the static analysis and there is no user added runtime hint port. It is eliminated during the build time. And because of that, now the two applications generated from the same source code during the same build command have different behaviors in two modes of operation. The JVM version executes the BART the second fact function just fine while the native image version results in a method not found exception when trying to execute the second function. With that in mind, we can conclude this demo session and go back to our presentation. All right, so now that we have seen that it actually works, the big question is, is it worth the effort? We have tested native image startup performance with four projects, and also two online studies are included in the table below. For the simple Hello World project that we have just created now, it was taking longer than a second to initialize with the JVM, but with the native image version, it only takes 33 milliseconds in average of 10 runs. There are four projects that we tested and they were starting up in one to three seconds. And now they start in only a fraction of a second. Two of my studies showed significant improvement too. From the staggering 15 and 20 seconds, their startup times are reduced to only half a second. For these, days, for these cases that we have considered, the speed up ranges between 14 and 37 times. But the cost is build times have increased significantly. For the Hello World project, it took around one and a half minutes to compile, and it grows around to 20 minutes for even larger projects. So to summarize the solution, we have discussed the slow startups have two main reasons, the Spring itself and the JVM. We used GraalVM ahead of time compilation to get rid of the JVM. And we used the Spring ahead of time processing to reduce Spring's load at the startup, which was a prerequisite for the GraalVM. We have seen that the reachability matters and we may end up with errors that do not occur in the JVM mode of operation. We have demonstrated all that in a simple case and observed a significant speed up at startup performance. Overall, for the other benchmark, we have seen the startup performance has been improved for up to 37 times. So, so far we have discussed the slow startup problem of Spring applications and have demonstrated how native images address this problem. We are now halfway through the content and now might be a good time to take any questions before we move ahead with the rest of the content.
So if the audience has any questions, we can go over them now. I am checking the chat and not seeing any questions at the moment, but I will wait a few seconds in case someone's typing something. Um, and by the way, we will also have a second Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if you, if you want to say your questions at the last moment, this is also fine. And okay, I guess we do not have any questions at the moment. Oh, all right. So the question is, the memory is also incredibly reduced when using CorelVM, and yes, that is a valid point. Yes, um, to keep this um, presentation at a reasonable duration, we actually skipped it so far, but it is definitely worth mentioning. So another benefit of using CorelVM is it incredibly reduces your memory footprint. So this may not sound like it's a huge deal at the moment, but um, when you consider especially cloud native systems, it actually affects costs tremendously because, well, when you're choosing instances, you basically have to choose the C amount of CPU and the amount of memory. And if your application's bottleneck is the memory, then you simply choose the instance with the amount of memory it has. So you basically start paying more money only because you use more memory. And Gravium can drastically reduce your application's memory consumption and reduce your costs. And on top of that, since we have already discussed serverless, um, this would also reduce your um, cost with Lambda because, well, AWS Lambda functions um, charge you by the amount of time you run your executable, but they also charge you with the amount of memory you consume. So drastically reducing your memory consumption would also drastically reduce your um, costs with AWS Lambda. So um, thank you, Alejandro Gonzalez. That was actually a nice point that we have skipped in this presentation so far. So another question from Eugene is, have you tried other Java frameworks that pretend to work with native images? So I don't have professional experiences with um, other frameworks such as um, Quarkus, Helicon, or um, well, I can't remember the third one's name, but we will come to that at a later My, time. Micronaut would probably. Micronaut, yeah, that's the third one. I always forget that name. <laughs> um, so as I have mentioned, I don't have um, professional experience with that, but to prepare for this presentation, I have done basic um, tests with these frameworks as well. And yeah, they are more native image friendly because, um, well, different from Spring, they are built with cloud native applications in mind at the first place. And they deeply care about startup performance. So they don't suffer as much from these um, performance penalties that Spring incur. And they do play better with um, native image generation, but they also suffer from similar caveats such as um, reflection and stuff. But they did have um, first class native image support from, I think, day one in these frameworks. But Spring is now trying to play catch up, and I think they're doing a good job. Um, all right. And we have another question that says, how can GraalVM be adapted for serverless solutions such as AWS Lambda? All right, um, that's another great question. So um, I have actually deployed a um, Spring native product into an AWS Lambda, and they have a great guide on that. But basically, it boils down to this. Um, well, in AWS Lambda, you don't have the server information, and you have to build your executable specific to a server because that is a native executable now. But AWS Lambda provides you with an EC2 image that you can use to compile your native application and to test it. And with that, you will ensure that your native executable is actually native to the Lambda environment itself, rather than native to your build environment. And it also, the AWS Lambda also provides you with an option for a custom runtime. So with these two combined, actually AWS Lambda does 
provide and need support of the NATO. All right, and another question is, does Spring NATO support Spring aspects, Spint aspects? Um, I think that Sargi is referring to Spring AOT with this question, and yeah, it does support Spring AOT. It doesn't suffer from any drawbacks, as far as I know, and I have tested. All right, and another question is, what about the license on Gravium as Oracle project? Could be used for production or only in evaluation? Well, that is actually a really good question that I do not have the answer for. I haven't deployed a Gravium native image at a professional level, and I didn't thought of to think um, a permission to deploy my own project, but I, think that Gravium documentation would be the source to um, go for this answer. Um, yeah, that, that's a good question though. And another question from Yijun is, is the introduction of native images increases the cost and time of CI processes? And well, we have discussed that it dramatically increases build durations. It starts from one and a half point for simpler projects and climbs towards half an hour and yeah, it would definitely, if you're running your CI pipeline on a um, serverless platform, it would definitely increase the cost. But keep in mind that these um, Gravium native images would probably be the last step of your deployment pipeline. So it's not a developer process. It's not something you should run at your desk, but it probably belongs in a nightly build. So maybe it's run, run once a day, or if you're using a CI, it's run every um, deployment. But yeah, it makes the deployment process and the compilation um, more complicated and long, definitely. Um, so another question is, what are the steps to migrate existing Spring Boot project to Gravian based solution? Um, so as I have mentioned, the only thing that you in theory have to do to enable Gravian is to simply add the Maven or Gradle plugin. And that's it. You, with just that, you can start compiling native images. But the problem is now you actually don't know whether or not you need reflections. And this is something that we will talk about in the second part of this presentation. So um, if by then your question is still unanswered, maybe we can revisit that at the end of this presentation. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for these great questions. So. For the time being, I will um, go on with the rest of the presentation, but we can have another Q&A session at the end of this presentation. So once again, thank you, everyone. All right. Now that we covered how it works and the potential performance benefits, let's take a deeper look into the consequences of using native images. So in this section, we will discuss the limitation of native images. We will also take a deeper look into how to handle the reflections. And finally, we will discuss how to test native images. The biggest consequence is the closed world assumption. You now have to have all your dependencies available at the build time, no longer loading them from the runtime environment. And this closed world for Spring also means that you cannot change the defined beans. So you cannot use the profile dependent bean annotations. This overall leaves you with less flexibility. Another point is the longer build times. It takes around two minutes to build the Hellavert project. It extends to five minutes for larger projects that we were taking a few seconds to start up. But for the bigger projects, the build duration is around half an hour. And yet another point is that these images are now non-portable. Unlike the Java bytecode, they are built for a specific operating system and an architecture. And yet another consequence is the need to provide reflection hints. This creates a brand new way to create bugs that cannot be detected in tests running on JVM. 
let's talk a little bit more about how the detections are handled. So Spring AOT takes care of Spring-related reflections for you, and you are expected to add hints for your own reflections. But what about any third-party libraries that you probably use? Because they cannot be expected to include native image reflection hints because they probably do not care. So what are you supposed to do? You cannot go into the library code and hunt down every use of reflection that is not really efficient and it is counterintuitive. To work around that, native image tools gives you two solutions. The first and easier one is to use the reachability metadata project, which is available on GitHub. It has pre-made and tested hints for common libraries, which is maintained and expanded by the community. And the nice thing about this solution is it works with your plugin. So no additional configuration is needed. The downside is though, it is limited to the libraries the community has uploaded. So if you use a different library, this solution will not work for you. A second and generic solution is to run your application with an agent to intercept and collect reflections as your application runs in the JVM. This creates the missing reflection hints for you and works with any library and also for your own code. But the downside is hints are generated only for the exercise called paths. If you miss an execution path, you may miss reflection hints that are needed in that path. Let's move on to discuss how to test native images. There are two main concerns to test for. The first one is Spring AOT processing works just fine and the beam definitions are generated okay. And the second one is GraalVM AOT compiling has all the needed hints to produce a complete image of your application. To test Spring AOT processing is working as expected, Spring provides you with the option of running the AOT processed application on the JVM. In this mode of operation, Spring uses the generated beam definitions instead of scanning for them, as it usually does. This gives you a chance to test Spring AOT processing in isolation without compiling into native images. To test your AOT compiled code works fine in the native image, GraalVM can extend the native image to include your unit and integration tests. With that, you can run your tests and make sure your application behavior for these tests is the same. But due to long build times, that is probably not suitable for a developer flow, as in it would take a long time to do a small change and then test that in a native image as you usually do with test-driven approaches. So this probably belongs in the CI CD pipeline rather than being part of the local tests. And of course, as always, the ultimate way to test an application is to have end-to-end -end and acceptance tests. This way, you can test both Spring and GraalVM AOT has produced a working binary for your application. And moreover, if you already have such tests in place that extensively cover your execution paths, you can use them with the tracing agent that we have mentioned before to generate reflection hints in the first place. To recap, let's go over on what it takes to make a project native ready. The prerequisite is to have Spring version 6, because that's when it's introduced to the general audience. After that, you just need to add a Maven or a Gradle plugin, or just check the native checkbox on Initializer if you are creating a new project. Then you need to make sure all runtime dependencies are included in your native image. The Spring AOT takes care of spring related stuff. And if needed, you need to add reflection hints for your sources and any third party dependencies. Then you just build a native image with the plugin you have added. And then you really need to make sure the runtime dependencies are indeed there.
because otherwise your native image will have errors the JVM version does not have. And with that, you can say goodbye to the JVM. And this brings us to the next section where we can discuss the current state of the Spring native development and what the future may bring. Let's start with discussing the current interest to the Spring native. To get an idea of its popularity, we can check the number of questions tagged with Spring Native and compare it with other tags on Stack Overflow. So comparing with the number of questions with Spring Cloud, we can see that the native is lagging quite behind and it is its main target environment. Now, comparing with other Java frameworks that have Cloud Native support designed into them, like Quarkus, Micronaut, and Helicon, it is quite behind of the Quarkus and Micronaut at the moment, but it seems like it's caught up with the Helicon. With that, it is fair to say that the Spring Native is still not quite widespread, but considering it has been released to the general audience only six months ago, that is to be expected. But it is climbing in popularity and community support as it develops. Having discussed the current state of things with Spring Native, let's discuss what the future holds for this new technology. At the current state, Spring Native presents only a binary choice. You either use it and get all the benefits for all the limitations, or you don't use it and carry on with things as you did before. But this does not have to be the case. Wouldn't it be so much better if it were in incremental steps instead? This would allow you to trade flexibility for faster startups at a rate that is suitable for your needs. Instead of either opting in or out of Spring Native, what if you could pick and choose what sacrifices you are willing to make? Well, the good news is both the Spring and Oracle developers seem to agree with that idea. There is an ongoing open JDK project that is named Project Laden. Similar to GraalVM, it will compile the Java project into a native executable. And its main focus is to identify common trade-offs that can be made for common Java projects. Then it will offer the user options to choose among these predefined trade-offs. And the good thing is Project Laden's requirements are in line with what Spring AOT processing does in place. So once it's released, it is planned to be compatible with Spring Native. Then you can either go forward with Spring Native with GraalVM or Spring Native with Project Laden, giving you multiple choices. Both the JVM community and the Spring community seems to be fed up with slow startup times. So yet another OpenJDK project that aims to address this is the project Crack. This is not a native solution. This application will still use a JVM, but the idea is to start up your application as you normally would, then to create a warmed up JVM. Then the JVM state is saved as a snapshot to be later restored from, resulting in faster startups. Yet another direction the Spring Native might follow is to add even more constraints to allow more assumptions, resulting in even faster startup times. But at the moment, all of these are to be seen. There is no official announcement from neither the Spring devs nor the OpenJDK devs on what these new technologies will bring and at what cost. But one thing is for sure. The slow startups are an issue for both Spring and Java community, and both are actively trying to improve in that area. Now that we have discussed what the future holds for Spring Native, let's revisit the problems we initially started with. One problem we discussed was the issues with horizontal scaling. With Spring Native, now we can have a more agile reaction as the application takes less than a second to start. A second problem was regarding disaster recovery. With Spring Native, 
we do achieve faster recovery. It takes us less than one second to recover. And if the project's constraints allow for a second of downtime, we can indeed eliminate standby instances. The third problem we discussed was slow startups locking us from using function as a service platforms. With the reduced cold start times, Spring applications play much better with these platforms. An interesting use case for its newfound ability is to spin a developer backend environment. Such temporary environments are needed at times to maybe support front-end developers or maybe testers in their work. Or sometimes a specific version of backend is needed to carry out certain tasks. For this example, let's assume we use AWS. Traditionally, to deploy a backend environment on AWS, one goes with EC2. You create an instance, install required dependencies, do the needed configuration, and finally launch your app. This certainly works, but the problem is you end up paying for the idle times too. Then there is a service approach. You set up a Lambda function that launches your application as a native executable, and you set up an API gateway to direct user requests to that Lambda function. The beauty of this approach is it costs you absolutely nothing if you do not use it. It will incur costs only when someone sends requests to the application. Now, it will take slightly longer to respond because of the startups, but this is possibly acceptable for a dev or test environment. And yet another thing is it scales terribly well. You can add as many versions of the application as you wish. You may want to create environments with different application versions, then just go for it. You may create configurations that are tailored to people's needs, just add another Lambda. You can keep adding new environments because they are just free to keep around. So maybe this is something to keep in mind for the next time you need to set up a temporary dev environment and you don't want to spend premium money on an instance that will not be used for the most of the time. And finally, the summary for this presentation. Spring Native is a recent technology. It is a different mode of deployment with strong assumptions and strong benefits that aims to give you faster startups. By doing so, it improves application scaling and disaster recovery and enables us to use functions as a service platforms. On the downside though, it sacrifices flexibility and build durations. So thank you all for your attention. And if the audience has any further questions, we can go over them now. And we had one question that we partially skipped to um, answer in the remaining part. And it was, what are the steps to migrate existing Spring Boot project to Gravian-based solution? So again, to summarize, the way you go is you add the required plugin, and that is the only infrastructure that you actually need. But then you may need to add um, reachability metadata, and that is usually done by hand because you know where our reflections are. But if you, if you have um, acceptance tests or end-to-end -end tests, you can utilize the tracing agent to handle these creations automatically. And you also need to um, pay attention to the closed world assumption. So if you were loading dependencies at the runtime, as some libraries do, this will not be possible anymore. And again, this will result in a method not found exception. And yet another thing to um, pay attention to is that some Spring facilities are um, not working as they do with JVM versions. And one of them is the profile annotation. Um, in JVM mode of deployment, you can have profile annotation and each bean version is just within the application itself. But the one that you need is used um, with the active profile you have. And this is not a problem with JVM because 
all the beam definitions for all possible profiles are within your jar files. But with native images, that is not the case anymore. You may end up with a case that some of the beam definitions for some of the profiles are not there. And this may again cause you to um, bootstrap wrong beams. Hopefully, this um, answers the rest of this question. So I do not see any new questions at the time, but we can wait for a few more seconds in case there is a new question. All right, I guess that wraps up the questions the audience might have. And once again, thank you all for your attention and honestly, great questions. Um, and thank you for listening. Hope this was um, helpful to your native image journey. I think that we had a lot of questions in the middle of Q&A session. So Nazim, thank you so much for your presentation. And um, we will share this recording at our YouTube channel. So if you will have questions, you can also comment there. So thank you everyone for joining us. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.